The Kelly Criterion does not have to be complicated. We don't need to memorize the formula, and we don't have to do all of that math because I know of a calculator that is programmed to do it for us. You son of a bitch. Hey, sports better. My name is Michael Wright. In today's video, I'm going to talk about where to find this calculator and how to use it. First thing we need to do is go to oddsjam.com. I found this site last NBA season and it has truly optimized the way that I approach sports betting. It has all the tools you need as a sports better to make sure that your bets have the most expected value. I don't make a bet without checking this website first. Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Oh god! Once we're here, we need to find out what the most accurate win percentage for our bet is by using the Novig calculator. If you haven't seen my video on how to use the Novig calculator, it'll be linked in the description. It's a very quick and simple process. Essentially, it will help you find the winning percentage of your bet, as well as what the odds should be. Remember to use the sharpest sportsbook for this step, as this is going to give you the most accurate win percentage. Once you have this number, bring it to the Kelly calculator and enter it in where it says win percentage. The next thing the calculator asks for is the odds. Now, these are not the same odds that you use to find your win percentage. These odds are what you found after line shopping for the best odds. This step can actually be done while you're finding your win percentage. When you're looking for the sharpest line to use for the Novig calculator, go ahead and find the best line too and write it down. Take the sharpest lines to the Novig calculator to get your win percentage and now you have everything you need for the Kelly calculator. The last thing we need to talk about is the Kelly multiplier. To keep it simple, this is going to take the sum of the equation and multiply it. If you use 1, it multiplies by 1 and it has no effect. 2 would double it, 3 would triple it. If you use a decimal like 0.5, it's actually going to turn this sum into a half, and 0.33 would be a third. Basically, we turned the multiplier into a divider, and this is what we want. I'll explain. The Kelly Criterion was not created for sports bettors who never bet above 5% of their bankroll, and it will actually tell you to bet up to 30 or 40%. To dial this back, we're going to use 0.33 for the Kelly multiplier every time. And as a rule of thumb, if the calculator still tells you to bet over 5%, just round it down to 5. Making this adjustment is going to make the Kelly criterion more akin to sports betting. I don't know, I think it was made for stocks and other Wall Street type of investments where it's a lot more common to invest larger percentages of what you have. Sports betting is a different kind of science though, so it would make sense to adjust their criterion to make it more practical for us sports bettors. In this example on screen, I can show you what the calculator is doing to come up with this number. After using the Novig calculator, I got 59% as my win percentage. Because I'm using OddsJam system, I know this is the most accurate win percentage based on the sharpest line available. The sharpest line is the most accurate because they're not offering you any good deals to try to get you to make the bet. Aside from juicing the bet to ensure their own profit, they have not adjusted these lines. And since I eliminated the juice using the Novig calculator, I know this was the true win percentage before the juicing occurred. Now, this calculator is going to compare this win percentage with the best line that I have found to determine how valuable my bet is. With minus 118, I actually have decent value, and the calculator recommends 3.5% of my bankroll. The main idea of the Kelly Criterion is that your unit size should be based on how much value your bet has. If you have more value, you bet more. Less value means betting less. To demonstrate the calculator doing this, let's say that the best line that I found was worse than minus 118. Let's say it was minus 125. Since I now have less value in my bet, the calculator says that I should bet less. 2.5% to be exact. And if the best line available was minus 130, it tells me to bet 1.88. I like to round this to the nearest half of a percent, so in this case, I'd bet 2%. Going back to the minus 118 we started with, 
And just in case you were wondering what it would say if we weren't using the 0.33 multiplier, when I set it to 1 to see what it would be normally, it says 10.65. Well, which one is it? Which one indeed? Obviously, I would never recommend you bet this much. So 0.33 multiplier, rule of thumb. Minus 106 is where the calculator passes 5% even when using our multiplier. Personally, 5% is the max amount I will wager. So for me, anything better than minus 106 would be bet the max 5%. This may not sound like much, but if you have a decent sized bankroll, then 5% ends up being a good sized bet. 5% of a $2,000 bankroll would be a $100 bet. Alright sports better, if you made it this far, I truly appreciate your time and I hope I return the favor by showing you how I use the Kelly Criterion. I've always been interested in this method and so far this is the best way that I've found to incorporate it into sports betting. I wish you all the best fortune and luck in your sports betting career and I'll catch you in the next one.